Hello, I'm Jason Connolly, CEO of JMC Legal Recruitment. And over the last few weeks, I've been doing a series of vlogs tackling a whole range of issues uh, for candidates in the legal sector. And today I've been asked by a number of uh, budding and enthusiastic law graduates to do a vlog on how to get a role in legal without experience. Now it can be really hard as a graduate or a young person to get that first foot on the ladder or foot in the door. Now we here at JMC, we receive hundreds of graduate CVs every single week and there's more graduates than there are roles. Um, the ratio at the moment is even harder with it being COVID times. So I think it's more important than ever to stand out as a graduate or a young person. So in this video today, I'm going to talk about my top tips in order to how to get a role with no experience. Now, firstly, if you are a graduate or you, if you are at university, I would say you want to be taking strides towards thinking about your career or thinking about your roles, even as early as your first or second year at university. Start to think about what experience it is uh, that you need to obtain. Do you want to do work experience? Do you want to do internships? And what I would recommend is that you take advantage of your university's career services. Normally, there's a wealth of information at these services, people who really understand the local market. So maybe if you're going to look for a graduate job in the local market to where your university is, I would first of all go to your university's career services centre because there can be some really good resources there. And normally they have a very good network of local employers. Now, many law graduates will secure a role maybe one or two years ahead uh, through the training contract scheme with large city practices. But lots of law firms, especially uh, maybe regional firms, regional heavyweight firms, will look um, to not hire that far in advance, maybe a six months or a year in advance at absolute maximum. What I would always do is keep an open mind regarding the role and especially the practice area. A lot of graduates can really get um, in a mindset that they only want to go into a certain practice area of law. But I'm a big believer that any experience at a graduate level is great experience. Yes, you might have your preference towards one particular practice area, but I wouldn't get so hung up on that. But you have to have experience in that um, practice area necessarily or go straight into that. What you could always do is you could go into a law firm, get experience in that one practice area and as part of an appraisals process or part of um, spending time with your line manager you could express an interest in that area of law and look to make a move over internally. When being open-minded about the role, you also want to think about what transferable skills you might have. Now, it might be a situation where you might have secured employment in a different industry sector, perhaps in retail, maybe hospitality or in an office job during a summer vacation or during the summer holidays, etc. Think about those transferable skills. We'll come on in a moment to how uh, to apply for a graduate position, how to pivot yourself in the best light when applying for those roles, because it's really important that you stand out. There's a lot of competition out there and you need to be ahead of the game when applying for a role. Now, networking, I believe, is one of the most important things to do um, at any um, age, any level of experience, whether you're a partner, a graduate, just starting out. It's all about networking. It's all about who you know in life, I believe. Um, and when you're uh, trying to succeed in business, your network is absolutely everything. Now, even as a graduate, I would be building a LinkedIn profile. The power of LinkedIn and uh, social media these days can't be underestimated. The first thing we do when we go to look for a graduate um, or a graduate applies for a job here at JMC is we go and look at their LinkedIn profile. If they don't have a LinkedIn profile, this is straight away a disadvantage. It's really important to start building that when you're at university and to start building your network. Now, to build your network, you could do that, first of all, through your university connections. Well, how LinkedIn works is you can only send connection requests to second connections. So you must have a mutual connection in place. So what I would start doing is um, connecting to people at university and when thinking about which practice area you, it is you want to do, supposing let's say you want to go into real estate as a paralegal, I would start connecting to partners, associates and people within that practice area. I would always put a note when uh, sending a connection requests, something uh, along the lines of I'd really like to add you to to my network I'm really passionate about this practice area and I would start building up your network that way um, I would also uh, be making sure that you actually use the platform and post you only want to post relevant content but you'd be really surprised I think by the power of uh, your LinkedIn network and what you can harness through that I see uh, very very often on my LinkedIn feed graduates who've put out messages on their LinkedIn network asking for help advice even roles or information on roles and the legal community is so helpful 
helpful, so friendly, and all too often people will be delighted to offer help. So start building your LinkedIn profile. Um, I have done another video based um, purely around the subject of LinkedIn, and it's a massive subject, but I think to get onto the platform in the very early days is essential. I would start networking um, early on. Uh, there's lots of uh, events you can attend at university, also for your law society and also on websites like meetup.com. I use Meetup all the time and it's great for business, great for networking. And you can even start your own groups. It's all about meeting new people, uh, going out there, building your network, building a connection base, making friends in the area that uh, perhaps really interests you. I would also um, message um, people directly for advice. Once you've got a clear idea of where you want to go in your career, I would reach out to uh, partners in local law firms and actually put together a target list. So for instance, let's say again, you want to go into real estate law. You know that you only want to go to a law firm within 10 miles um, from your parents' address, let's say. You could go onto the find a solicitor section of the Law Society website and put in the postcode of your parents' address. And then you can load up a list of all the different firms in that local area. And what the Law Society will tell you is it will tell you how many solicitors there are in each firm, the practice areas they specialise in, and it will give you a general overview of each firm. Then once you've got um, that kind of really clear in your mind, I would start going out and generally, um, once you've got that practice area in mind, start going out and even messaging partners and associates with a really good email. It doesn't need to be war and peace. It doesn't need to be too long. If it's too long, there's a chance people won't read it all. So it's really important to be succinct to the point and send them a copy of your CV along with a covering letter. Um, now, with a covering letter, it's really important that the covering letter is no more than one page. If it's more than one page, that's far too long. And again, you might find that people don't read it. So you want to be to the point, And the whole point of a covering letter is to talk about what you want to achieve, what experience that you've had and where you want to go in your career and to bring yourself to life. Now, whilst we're on the subject of the CV and the covering letter, the CV is really important. Now, I personally think the CV should be tailored for each role that you apply for. Now, you might have one or two favourite practice areas. Supposedly, you, let's just say you might want to go into corporate or you might want to go into real estate. You could still perhaps have one uh, CV that goes to both practice areas, but I think it's much stronger and much uh, better to have a tailored CV for each area. It's worth the time investment to do. It will make you stand out and having um, a, a CV that is tailored that really goes into some detail about, for instance, why you want to go into real estate, what interests you about real estate, what's your motivations, what's your passion, what do you enjoy about it? That's really going to carry weight. Now, it is difficult um, when you first put your CV together if you don't have a lot of experience. But I think what you must think about is, um, during those early days at university, trying to get that experience. So whether it's been uh, going out there during the summer and getting internships, uh, they, they can be worth their weight in gold. And even internships can be sometimes hard to secure. There is a lot of competition. But if you've got work experience, I would always try and get some uh, practical work experience during the course of your law degree, even if it's uh, just working in a law firm for a couple of weeks. Um, there's a lot of contract work that normally comes up around the summertime in terms of things like document review, and that can also be worthwhile. Now, what do you do if you haven't had any legal experience? You're just about to qualify or graduate even, and you're in a position where you haven't managed to be uh, lucky enough or fortunate enough to have some of that practical work experience. What I would focus on is transferable skills. What skills is it that you have that could transfer over uh, to, to an employer or to a role? Now, when you get a job specification or a job advert, a lot of the time a job specification takes um, the form of a wish list. It is the wish list of what does the firm want from that particular person? What are the um, soft skills? What are the um, people specification um, skills that they're looking for? And what, what will normally happen in a um, hiring manager's mind when they're going through the CV pool of who they've got is they'll be looking for CVs that in their mind tick the boxes of the responsibilities of the role. So those transferable skills can be really, really valuable. I would always make sure they're at the very top of the CV. You want to have those skills outlined, but also not just put down that you've got strong communication skills or you're very organised. I would back that up with more in the way of writing. Everybody these days um, sort of outlines that they're um, uh, very organised or very good communication skills or very good written skills. I think it's one thing just 
just to write that phrase. I think it's another thing to back it up with some evidence, back it up with um, some experience that you've had or something that really makes it stand out. I think another bit of advice that I would always give people who are looking for that first run on the ladder is to go out and uh, reach out directly to people, apply directly to firms and actually um, really immerse themselves in the uh, legal world. I think that you don't have to necessarily wait for jobs to come up or vacancies to come up before you reach out and write to people. I think by going out proactively, you really put yourself ahead of the crowd, ahead of the game. And you're, uh, in essence, what you're doing is you're eliminating a lot of the competition. If you're submitting your details proactively, you'd be all too surprised by how often luck can strike. And you might uh, send out your details and then a couple of weeks, the firm might think, we have a paralegal role, we have a legal assistant role. Let's look through, before we go through the effort of writing out a big job specification, who sent in their details proactively. So that can be really helpful. Now, we're all too happy here at JMC to offer tailored advice, but it can be difficult as a graduate. And I hope this video really gives a few bits of advice on how to get ahead.